Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by Contribution from Anonymous, and here's a story. Hi, Ollie. Just wanted to send a voicemail of my mother's typical day conversation. Remember, my sister, whom I've got no contact with the past six weeks, is hounding me with voicemails, as you and your subscribers are aware if they have been following this never-ending saga. My sister has sent me a voicemail about a week ago expressing her concerns that my mother's dementia is getting worse and that if I plan on seeing her again, I should do this ASAP. Before she forgets who we all are, just, in, just another attempt to gaslight me into engaging with her or getting me to take a trip down there so she can set me up for something. You can pick up the recording of my mom in the recording of my mom that she is not really supervised properly by my brother, as my mother confirms as he is up until daylight and sleeps until afternoon on his computer. You can also pick up from the recording that my mother at at first when asked what day of the week it is, thinks it is Tuesday, but is able to figure out on her own the correct day of the week. My sister also had said in her last voicemail that my mother keeps forgetting that her brother passed away. But as I said in the last video, she is the one that usually brings this up to me, so I know for sure she remembers. Lesson to everyone, record and document. I am not only doing this for myself, but also in case at any point I may need to get Adult Protective Services involved. My sister is a dialysis nurse and knows fully well how to assess someone for confusion. With a history of type 2 diabetes, as many other patients ended up on dialysis due to the type, due to the type of diabetes. She, is at the very, she at the very minimum could act as if she were a nurse instead of a panic-stricken family member who has no medical knowledge. <clears throat> also, I just went over my latest records of expenses since March 2012 for my mother and brother and it ended up to $9,374.85. These are ever-growing expenses as some things I pay for for my mom such as her hair, her life insurance premiums, and toiletries for her monthly. I am I am the owner and beneficiary of her, of her life insurance which is only $5,000 and would not even be enough to pay for the funeral. I took over her insurance policy as, as it is my brother had caused it to fall behind not making payments a few months. And my uncle, who was, in, who was the, insurance agency, the insurance agent, suggested I take over the policy at that time. I also paid in full for her burial plot. I have all receipts and spreadsheet now with this documented. Also found in also found the receipt from my sister's dentist where I paid for her teeth to be fixed twelve hundred and one twelve hundred dollars and one cent back in September twenty thirteen. At the same time she said she would pay me back after and after three years have not received one red cent. I could not find the other receipt for that for the one prior that I paid for was around a thousand as well. Well, if you paid for it on a credit card, just go back, just call the credit card company and get your statement from when you paid for it. It'll be there. I have not responded to all my sister's blocked, not blocked voicemail, not blocked voicemail messages, and she is panicking. I am pretty sure she is really panicking now that she knows for sure that the ATM pin, that the ATM pin has definitely been revoked and her husband job, her husband's job ends this month with the severance of 20 grand, which we shall, which she will go fast, which will go fast due to her drug addicted, non-working son living with her and draining her resources. Nothing new there. She is also raising a six-year-old grandson who is the child of her other son who does work but pays no child support or financial contribution to her as far as I know. The baby mama is pregnant now with her third child from all different fathers and none of them from a legal spouse. My sister, my sister is into appearances only and has never admitted to her sons both being deadbeats essentially 
and always praising and lifting them up in my eyes over the years. She was able to do this because not living near them, thank God, I was able to verify I was never able to verify any of her BS. It is always with the time, it was always with the time that the truth eventually comes out and when confronted she makes excuses and gets very defensive. She then tells me as I have she then tell tell me as I have no children, I would not understand a mother's heart. Yeah, right. Please let me know if this attached recording, please let me know if this attached recording goes through. Um, hold on, because she also added another party to this. Okay. I forgot to add that my mom has no money. She has no inheritance for anyone to inherit. So if any of the commenters are going in that direction, they're figuring this all wrong. My mother is on security disability as well as my brother. Will you please just mention that in when you are reading the first email with mom's voice recording attached, just so everyone understands the full scope of what's going on. Right. You're, they're not after your mother's money. They're after yours. My mom has no money. She's barely making it month to month. Remember, that is why I set up Meals on Wheels, because they were running short on food every month, because my brother had refused to apply for the food stamps. That is why I'm helping out with my mother. What she passes away, what she passes away, when she passes away, he's on his own. I don't pay their rent. I don't pay their gas bills. I don't pay their utilities. I just paid for my mom's hair every month right now. That's all I'm doing, except for paying for her insurance for a life for insurance premium for a life insurance policy so that we had so that at least when she dies towards her cremation okay another freeze up I even still recording. All right, it's still going. There it goes. Testing one, two. This is Thursday, October the 20th, 2016. I'm going to call my mom and going to assess her mental status here. See how she's doing overall. Hey mom, what you doing? Hi, I just got to meet Mrs. Cheryl. Oh, That's okay. her birthday. Uh -huh. I'll let you know right now. I'll be with you. Uh, what you have planned for today? But you just going to the office. I'm off. Well, I'm off today up until this afternoon. I do have to go in later this afternoon to work just for a couple of hours. But uh -huh. other than that, I'm pretty much free. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. How's the weather there? time remembering what day of the week it is. Shit, I have a hard time remembering what fucking month it is most of the time. It's because the weather never changes here, so you got to kind of think about it. But day of the week, when you're not working, when you don't go to a job every day, or if you work from home, like what I do, it's real, it's real easy to forget what day of the week it is, especially at her age. It's not a sign of dementia. 
Necess not necessarily. I mean, but your mother doesn't sound like she has any dimension at all. She sounds very coherent. I think there's just silence. Oh yeah, that's true. That's that's Thursday. I keep that uh pull back when I'm going to take my bed every day. I got it. I got nominated to take a time. I'll ask you to check it out there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean your mom's voice is doesn't come over very very well, or at least I'm having a hard time understanding it, but not because she's incoherent, because you know, she has a southern accent, you know. She has a very sick southern accent, so a little hard to pick up, but she doesn't sound incoherent. That's good. Yeah, she's so how's everything going around? No, I'm I'm gonna go she talk. did. Talking about the the funeral and uh and the uh I think she's supposed to be talking. She talked. She, she was talking to you about what? Uh, uh, they got my son on that. What are they going to have Sunday? If you want to have Sunday with him and you, they're going to have. I'll get together like this. I'll get together. Oh, uh, I like a, yeah. for a memorial? Uh huh. Okay. For everybody listening, because the mother does sound like she might be incoherent, like she's garbling her words, but it's just a very thick southern drawl. Because she has no problem understanding her mother and knowing what she's saying, so. That's good. I mean, it's sad that he had the post-traumatic stress from Vietnam, but sometimes, yeah, you know, it, right. he went a lot of years without any symptoms and or any actual problems that anyone knew about, but he may have been suffering without us really understanding everything. There's a, there's a lot, of, lot of things he they didn't talk about and discuss, and they weren't real, you know, they weren't real big on communication as far as you know, letting anybody know what was going on. So, I mean, there could have been a lot of things going on since they lived pretty far away. Nobody really knew how he was doing day to day. And I'd have to call, I'd call up sometimes just to talk to him. I'd yeah. call up my son and they'd just talk to him. Right. Not too long. Not wasn't too long before he got he had to call and talk to him. And but then he got, and then that day he got, you know, he got sick. And we sure are going to miss him. Yeah. We, uh, so how is everything else going around there, everybody? Well, so she definitely remembers. She remembers. I mean, the accent's a little hard to understand, but she knows what she's talking about. She's coherent. It's going to start. It's a quandary around here. Yeah. And it's so unpaced. Uh, it's just that way. It's a quandary around here. So that's good. This is a quiet place. Yeah. They have the children and the, uh, the, you know, they're kind of doing the homework. And uh, the accident is good. The bus lets the children run out and they go right along. And have you been to the doctor home. recently? Yeah, not long ago. You only care me. Okay. What did the doctor say about your overall health? About my thing, he said everything was fine. Well, it's another doctor, some because that day it was real busy and they had to have another doctor in there. And they would have to wait forever for you to get another doctor. I've got a doctor, he was. Oh, okay. And he said, keep checking everything. And okay, good. And everything, doctor, I'm sure. How was your blood sugar? Well, I don't remember, uh, uh, Ricky, uh, uh, Ricky remembers Bobby. Uh, I don't remember what blood sugar was, but it, I think they said it was fine. Okay, good. Yeah, it was fine. That's good. Uh, yeah, yeah That's I remember good. that it was fine from blood sugar. That, that, but of course, uh, I have to have it you know, checked in because uh, it's time for blood sugar. I think that's changing right. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Well, what's your plans for the day? Well, that's the she has no plans. So how are you supposed to remember what the hell day of the week it is? 
She sounds coherent. I mean, she's obviously in her later years. There's going to be some memory loss, but this isn't an, an incoherent uh, woman suffering from dementia from what I'm hearing. She's just from the very, very deep south. Is Ricky still sleeping? It's, uh, what time is it now? 10 o'clock there? 10, 10 a.m.? So he's up all night on the computer and you said he goes to sleep at daylight? Uh-huh, yeah, because he likes to play the computer at night. What time does he get up? What time is that usually? Different times. Different times. And, and, and I get it. He stays at night. He's going to sleep later. Eventually, he's laying there in the morning. But he gets up at different times, of course. He, that he sleeps late. Okay. Does he get up uh, after lunch or before lunch? Well, lunch is. Uh, uh, sometimes he'll uh, get up before lunch. And then sometimes he'll get up. Uh, Gee, he she knows the the lazy son's whole uh, whole schedule, but she's got dementia. Hmm, maybe it's to tell you. Maybe part of the dementia is so you don't believe anything that just comes out of her mouth. Catch up with what? You don't have a job. some run some errands and then I'll go to work for a couple hours later on today. Mother's trying to send you a message here. They are abusing her, whether it's your brother or your sister or both of them. Whether they're abusing her or just fucking neglecting her. But she's sending you signals of the help me. I enjoy talking to you. She's very excited when she talks to you. She knows everything the other son's doing, yet he can't help out. But she's the one with dementia? No. No, no, no. Narcissists don't do anything without a plan. This is how they're gaslighting her. Instead of her being crazy, she just has dementia. So anything that she might tell you, anything you might pick up off her, isn't real. It's the dementia. And let me tell you, when your mother does pass, you better throw that dude out. Because he ain't going to leave. If that's his legal address, understand something. If that's his legal address, you're going to have to go through an eviction process to get him out. And don't think he's not going to make you go through it. Trust me. Trust me. He's going to make you go through an eviction process to get him out. Now, if it's an apartment... That's on the landlord. So the landlord will have to do that. If it's a condo or something you own, then it's going to be on you. So you're going to need to consider when she dies, whether or not he's going to try to stay there, and then whether or not he's going to try to have you 
pay for the apartment to have him stay there. And I promise you that he will. I promise you he will and give you a litany of reasons of guilt of why you should. So, no, your mother's not to, does not have dementia. You're a medical professional. You know that, obviously. Look, they are setting up their pawns. This is a chessboard they're playing. Your brother and sister are playing chess, and they're setting up pawns for future moves after your mother dies. Your sister doesn't want to lose the ATM, and your brother doesn't want to lose the ATM. This All this bullshit with the dementia is to cover their own asses because they're up to something in that house. So you, So hopefully you don't believe them, and you start pumping in money. You wait. It's coming. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. So you're going to need to be prepared for it. You're going to need to be prepared for it. Because these two aren't going to stop. They already got you funding a lot of her stuff as it is. You're already going to have to pay for her funeral as it is. They just don't want the gravy train to ride to, to end. They don't want the gravy train to end. And all they're doing is setting up pawns on a chessboard for future moves against you. But you already know that. Thank you again for your contribution. Thank you for your story and the audio. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, if you have a topic you'd like me to cover or a narcissist you'd like to expose, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email links in the description box. And remember, when you do email me your story, please put at the top of the email, whether it's with or without contribution, and what name you'd like to go by. Solly Matthews, thanks for watching. See you all again soon.